Um, I'm going to present you a um, $100 million opportunity that could um, massively um, improve the outcomes of half a million patients worldwide per year and also boost um, annual sales of all endovascular devices. So until we are waiting for the presentation to go on, yep, um, I will tell you that the opportunity is really about creating a new category of catheters. Um, there are catheters with balloons, stationary balloons, there are catheters without balloons, and now, thanks to my co-founder's invention, there will be catheters with mobile balloons. Now, when I heard this about three years ago, I got so excited and I got motivated. And even though we were in Greece, I said, I'm going to build this venture. And I say, Greece is not the most obvious place for medtech innovation. However, we won uh, last year the first prize uh, among 100 startups that were competing in the InnoStars Awards and European Union uh, competition. What's the problem? The problem is that even most skilled surgeons can be limited in treating patients with chronic total occlusion. So it's one of those pervasive problems that go a bit unnoticed until you see an amputated limb. So it's cramping, fatigue, pain, poor quality of life. Um, and the problem is that you don't cross the guide wire, which is the main challenge for uh, CTO revascularization. How do most catheters work in the market, there are hundreds of them. And still one out of three fail, with longer surgeries, more complications, higher costs, and failed endovascular procedures means open or no surgery at all. The current approach, clinically speaking, is you try with a simple support catheter you may cross if it's an easy occlusion. You may end up going subintimal. So if I go a bit too, clean, too technical here, so subintimal is you go through the, the walls of the vessels, right? So it's very risky. Uh, and you might succeed. Then you, you, you'll need a re-entry device, um, or not. And then you'll try retrograde, going from the um, distal cap under the knee, um, which you may fail again. And they do fail. So our device, intercross catheter, will offer a last resort before you abandon and, and you either uh, uh, leave the patient for an open surgery. Staying interluminal is the goal, so going to the center of the vessel, because that's the most lasting uh, therapeutic effect. Now, key to success is center line crossing. We have patented a two-in-one design. In the market, we either have products that anchor very well, or they do telescoping. None of them actually do both. So we go from either or to and and. And this is how it works. We have an outer shaft, a balloon, an inner shaft, and through it, the guide wire. So as we park the device against the CTO cap, we inflate the balloon to anchor, and then we move with the inner shaft extension to gain support and avoid kinking and buckling. And then the guide wire can cross. And here you can see uh, our current prototype in action. Um, it went really well yesterday in our in vivo trials in Israel. Um, you can see uh, how it has done in our in vitro uh, trials. This is a demo with silicone so that you can see how the brown part is the inner shaft and the black part is the guide wire. The balloon can deflate, then can be reinflated and gain better support to cross. So we will create a new standard for interluminal success. Um, the gold standard today is we consider to be the Bentley B-Back. Um, impressive performance, 88 success rate, but most of it is, is subintimal. So subintimal is more expensive, it's more risky, and it requires a lot of skill that you can't find everywhere. So our bench stop studies have shown that we can be 100% interluminal. We avoid the vessel walls, and therefore um, we end up being a lot faster. So, Different surgeons have tried with hard occlusions simulated for the actual CTO uh, lesion. Um, we used the BD Seeker, state-of-the-art uh, catheter. Um, two out of four times it didn't work, it didn't, it didn't cross. Um, and even in those two that it crossed, we were 10 times faster. Now in the soft occlusion, the Seeker was 
went fine, but we were again 10 times faster. We have a patent family uh, that we've built over the last um, eight years. So uh, the original uh, invention with a mobile balloon um, and then some additional work with continuations and um, other indications and different engineering approaches. Um, and we're hoping that with this patent, we open up a new market. So I mentioned in the beginning about the $1 billion opportunity. Let me explain a little bit how that works. So there are about a million underserved patients. You know, um, chronic um, critical limb ischemia is a debilitating disease. There are about 25 million people in the world. About 6 million procedures are done every year. Now, out of these, one out of four um, are not done endovascularly, right? Um, and we assume that half of them, so that means about 750,000 patients um, could get endovascular option if there was a device that could cross the guide wire. Um, and these would open up about a billion dollar opportunity for all other devices that are therapeutic and they're used after you can get the guide wire across. We assume that our product could address about 250,000 patients out of them, um, mainly in the U US and EU where we have IP protection. And that would be our beachhead market. We assume that we could be selling at about $400 per unit. So right there, a little bit more expensive than a, a standard uh, catheter. Um, so that's where our opportunity is for our own venture. Uh, we're a small team based in Greece, but we are helped by active advisors around the world. So um, Makis is a, a renowned uh, vascular surgeon ba based both in the US and Greece, and he helps us with clinical access, as well as David with preclinical pre and clinical work in Israel. Um, Alexandre, who has been part of the Endosense team that was bought out by St. Jude and Abbott, he's driving our product design, he's based in Switzerland, but spent some time in Romania and, and Greece. And Christos and Michael are based in Boston, and they're helping us with corporate development, IP strategy, and, and overall uh, support. Um, also, our suppliers currently are based you know, in Israel, Switzerland, where SG Medical helps us uh, a lot with manufacturing. Um, we're still at an early stage, but at least we've proven that the product can be manufactured, and it, it's robust, and it can work. Um, our original uh, proof of concept work was done in the US, uh, Merge Medical. And we're backed by one of the leading VCs in Greece, uh, Big Pie, um, supported by the European um, uh, Investment Fund. Um, key milestone ahead is uh, the feedback from the FDA we're expecting. We might be able to get preclinical pre uh, approval for uh, 510K without clinical trials, but of course, our next goal is to enter cre clinical trials next year. Um, so uh, we are uh, raising uh, more funds. We've raised uh, 300K to date. Uh, and um, we are focusing on the peripheral above the knee today, but we have coronary tomorrow and below the knee. So we see two futures. Um, one is acquisition for a significant competitive advantage, and, and of two is licensing to raise broadly the state of the art. So what role will you play in treating more patients? Stay in touch and stay in terminal for safer procedures, easier to use, faster crossing at a low cost to manufacture. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll be around until uh, Thursday to um, meet up. Thank you.